question of incarceration, uh, breaking the revolving door syndrome. And we're talking to the pastor of the Hands of God Christian Church, uh, Pastor Kevin Walker. And of course, uh, Pastor Walker, I think we talked, uh, uh, we promised you that we'd give you an opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, talk about an earlier ministry okay. that we know that you've been involved in and, and, and been quite successful. And mm -hmm. I want to try to at least get that in okay. before we talk about uh, the, uh, your outreach ministry. Sure. Yeah, I was uh, previously involved with an organization uh, called New Beginnings Organization. It was formed out at the River Bend Maximum Security Prison. I got involved with that organization, a group of inmates that had a desire to know to make a difference mm -hmm. within themselves while incarcerated mm -hmm. and of course to branch out on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I served as the president of that organization for a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I eventually uh, resigned from that organization and uh, but it's a great organization mm -hmm. and, and we got some good things started and as, as a matter of fact there's mm -hmm. programs still going on every Saturday out there at the Riverbend Prison mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you know they would appreciate any support you know that they mm -hmm. can get in terms of you know what they're doing mm -hmm. and trying to help the guys do what they do and getting out and getting into mainstream society mm -hmm. and making mm -hmm. a difference. Uh, like I said, I got involved with that and I've since resigned. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now, you know, uh, that was through that organization, I got really deeply involved on a mm -hmm. much deeper level mm -hmm. and it really just kind of opened up the floodgates of, of what I'm trying to do now because Dr. Haney, a lot of people, when we look at this reincarceration, people mm -hmm. going into the system and mm -hmm. then staying in the system 5, 10, 15, 20, sometimes 30 years and mm -hmm. then coming out and going back into the system and then society automatically wants to think that that individual is mm -hmm. a bad person mm -hmm. and that's not the reality of the situation mm -hmm. sometimes people go back into the system the biggest uh, reincarceration rate is due to uh, technical violations mm -hmm. uh, people that are on parole and they violate some technical condition of their parole mm -hmm. that causes them to go back lose a job uh, maybe get one dirty urine screen or something mm -hmm. like that or something of that nature which mm -hmm. would cause them to become reincarcerated I know mm -hmm. of a gentleman right now that's incarcerated, been there almost five years, mm -hmm. on just some technicalities, a brother mm -hmm. named Maurice Hendricks. And it, I mean, it's sad that these things have to happen like mm -hmm. that, but it, it does indeed happen. Mm -hmm. But what society needs to understand now is that there, there has to be something put in place to help people mm -hmm. that are coming out of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hands of God Recovery Ministry mm -hmm. is that ministry that we have designed to be able to assist people when they're coming out of the prison mm -hmm. system, people that are on the streets, uh, people that are suffering from drug addiction and the like. Mm -hmm. Because you find out that when people get out of the prison system, mm -hmm. then we expect them to go in the system, mm -hmm. be isolated from society, and then return back into society mm -hmm. and function as if they've been in society all those mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 years. What are some uh, of the problems that they create for an individual they, from for, your own personal experience? Well, first of all, it's that creates a great level of frustration because now you get out, you're not used to, in the prison system, you don't go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what the scanners are. You, mm -hmm. don't, you don't know, you don't experience walking up and down the store and picking from the shelves mm -hmm. the things that you need. You don't experience going to restaurants, sitting down and eating and, and the waitress coming. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're, you're introduced to a whole new different world. But people might say, well, this was going on before they went in. Mm -hmm. But you take a guy that's been in, in prison, Dr. Haney, for 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, things change from week to week around mm -hmm. here. You buy a computer this year, you need to upgrade it in, in a couple of years from now. Mm -hmm. And that's just an indication of how things change. You know, mm -hmm. you walk out, then you got the job market. First mm -hmm. of all, you're an ex, you're an ex offender. Mm -hmm. You got drug charges, murder charges, whatever you have, but you're an ex offender. And nobody wants to have the ex offender, mm -hmm. but the parole officer is saying, get a job, get a job, mm -hmm. get a job, or mm -hmm. I'll violate you. Mm -hmm. And then they're out there frustrated, trying to get a job, trying to get a job mm -hmm. with, the, with this cloud of, this violation cloud hanging over mm -hmm. their head. So now I can't find a job. Nobody wants to hire me. I don't mm -hmm. have the money to start my own business. So now what do I do? Mm -hmm. I know how to be a criminal mm -hmm. because that's what I've done all my life pretty much. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I revert back to that old behavior and then I'm reincarcerated again because mm -hmm. basically I've thrown up my hand because society is not helping me. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's so many issues. Uh, for example, Dr. Hayden, I got out of prison in 1981. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time I had a criminal conviction was in 1983, and I reminded the uh, mayor mm -hmm. Bill Purcell about that a couple of three weeks ago mm -hmm. because he was the last attorney in the public defender's office that rec uh, <laughs> represented mm -hmm. me on, on, the, on the charge. Mm -hmm. And I reminded him, but I got out after serving my time. Uh, I got out of the prison system, but I'm not considered as a citizen. Mm -hmm. I'm pastoring the church. Uh, I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to do. I'm trying to reach out and help people. Mm -hmm. But yet, I'm not really considered as a citizen in this country mm -hmm. because I have that, that criminal background. 
a lot of guys that are in prison, I, fortunately, I, I got into, I got in that window where you could register to vote mm -hmm. while I was in prison, and I've been able to do that. But what about the people now mm -hmm. that can't vote? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they've, they've stopped that uh, uh, the ability for people to uh, register while they're in, in, in Absolutely. Right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. See, and, and it, it, it has come in, it has gone out, and if there's a group here in town now that's, that's trying to do some things in terms of mm -hmm. getting voting rights restored to people coming out to mm -hmm. ex-offenders. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we have... I mean, if I'm out and I'm gainfully employed, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, mm -hmm. then I should, have, I should be able to have a voice. I should not, you take an individual, he's 18 years old, he mm -hmm. does a crime, uh, he gets a two-year sentence, and then he's out. Mm -hmm. But he's, in essence, he's got a life sentence because mm -hmm. now he's branded for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. He can't vote. A lot of people won't hire him, and now he's, he's caught up in this web, and now mm -hmm. he's like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. So now the drug games become appealing to him. The mm -hmm. games become appealing because society's saying, we don't want you. Although you paid us, mm -hmm. you paid your debt to society, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that wasn't good enough for us. Mm -hmm. We gave you five years. You did five years, but that, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. We want to track you for the rest of your life. We want to penalize you for the rest of your life. We don't want to hear from you. You're, you don't have a voice in this country. You don't have a voice in any of this. Mm -hmm. So now you're penalized mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. And so you're in a position, what do I do? So we mm -hmm. developed some programs mm -hmm. that, that's designed to try to help some people mm -hmm. in this situation. So when they come out, to grab them by the hand and say, mm -hmm. okay, listen, I know you're facing a world of frustration. I know people don't care, but we're going to try to network with some companies if mm -hmm. we can, some temporary services, somebody that's going to be willing to say, hey, we're going to give this guy a chance, chance. Mm -hmm. because he's involved in a program that's really trying to help him get grounded mm -hmm. and centered. Mm -hmm. And he's not just out here. Mm -hmm. He's not just out here floating around on his own trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Because you take the guy that's been incarcerated, or the woman for that matter, and they're out here and nobody's helping them mm -hmm. to maneuver around in society to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to re-indoctrinate, should I say, themselves mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. society, then they're just, they're lost. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what to do, so they give in to their base nature and start doing mm -hmm. those things mm -hmm. that's, that they know that they can do well. Mm -hmm. you know, I knew that when I was a criminal, I, I was a good criminal. I mm -hmm. know I could commit crime very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what we're saying here, uh, and, and I guess this is, uh, we've got a couple of minutes before our second commercial break. So what we're saying here is that it's very, very difficult for individuals to get out of, uh, uh, of the system and go out and find a job, even though many employers might give at least lip service to mm -hmm. the fact that they uh, right. they don't have any problems dealing, but but it's almost a, a life sentence, as you indicated. So uh, when we come back, what I want you to do is to talk to uh, the young people, okay. because uh, I think that in order to uh, break the revolving door syndrome, mm -hmm. you got to break the fact of young people uh, of people going to jail Absolutely. in a real sense, because it, it seems that after, and of course, uh, let's have this uh, second commercial break, after which we'll come back and uh, give you an opportunity to do that. We'll be back with our audience following. We're talking to Pastor Walker.